Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashok. This video is the part of Velocity Omni Studio Interview Preparation Series where I have created two videos which covers basic and data raptor related interview questions. So if you want to learn about those questions, then check out those videos and you can find link in description. And today in this video, we will see questions related to integration procedures and we will try to cover almost all the questions which can be asked into interviews. Okay. So let's start with today's first question that is what is integration procedure? So we already have seen in first part that integration procedures are the part of service management layer and this help us to perform multiple operations in single server call. So we can say this is just like a Apex class in which we can have multiple methods. Similarly in integration procedures also we can have multiple actions to perform different different operations. And in integration procedures, we can call data raptors, external APIs, Apex methods and perform many operations only with declarative approach. And we can also store integration procedure metadata and data into KSA. And we can do all these technical things only with point and clicks. So we can say this is a very powerful tool when we are working in Omni Studio. Okay. So now let's understand with a huge case like where this can help us. So let's say on clicking of next button in Omni script, you want to get data from external system and once you get the data, then you want to do some manipulation on that data and after doing that, you want to save into Salesforce database and after that, finally you want to show that data on UI. Okay. So if you want to achieve this requirement in Omni script without integration procedures, then what you need to do? You need to add multiple steps on Omni script. Like first step you will add to call external API. So you will add HTTP action step. Then to do data manipulation, you will add transform data raptor step. And again to shave those records into Salesforce database, you will call load data raptor using data raptor post step, right? So you can see to achieve this whole requirement, we have to add three to four steps on Omni script. And each step will make individual server requests to perform their operations. So our server will get three to four requests to perform this whole operation, right? But if we are going to use integration procedures, then we can achieve this whole requirement in single server call. Okay. So let me show you in my org, like how you can achieve this requirement there. So let's say this is my integration procedure to perform that operation. And you know, in integration procedure, we can have multiple actions or steps. So we can add all those steps here. Like to make callout, you can add HTTP action. And you can do configurations here like HTTP path, method type, named credentials. Okay. And for data manipulation, you can add data raptor transform action. And you can select your actual data raptor here. And to save data into Salesforce database, you can use data raptor post action and you can select your actual data raptor here. Okay. And to return something from here, we can use response action. Okay. So this is how we can implement this whole requirement in single integration procedure. And finally from Omni script, we can call this integration procedure. So this whole task can be done in single server request. So our Omni script will look cleaner and performance will be very good. Okay. So I think you got the idea what is integration procedure and how helpful it is for us. Okay. So now let's talk about what all action components are available in IP. Here IP means integration procedures. Okay. So let's open our integration procedure again and see. So you can see in this left panel, this is our component section. And here we have two types of components, groups and actions. So if we talk about actions components, then you can see we have lots of action components here. So let's discuss one by one. So first we have expression set action. So this action we use to call expression set or calculation procedures and calculation procedures we generally use to configure or perform complex math expressions. And next we have chatter action. So if you want to create a post and send it to the chatter in Omni Studio, then we can use this step. 
next we have data raptor extract action so if you want to call any extract data raptor then we can use this step and you just have to drag and drop and need to select your actual data raptor here because without using data raptors we can't directly select data from salesforce database so we have to create a data raptor and call them here using these actions like extract action will help us to call extract data raptor and using post we can call load data raptor and similarly transform is used to call transform data raptor and turbo extract for turbo extract data raptor okay and now next we have delete action so as we have discussed in last video that we can't delete data using data raptors and if you want to delete records in omni studio then we can do it in integration processes using delete action so this delete action help us to delete data from salesforce database and you can see here using this step we can delete data from multiple objects like we can add more rows here by clicking on this button and here we can select object from which we want to delete the data and here we need to provide the ids record ids which we want to delete and also we have a option here for partial delete all or none okay now next we have docusign envelope action so you might know that docusign is a saas based application saas means software as a service which help us to get documents digitally signed so if you want to send any document for e signature using docusign and you want to send it seamlessly like without leaving the salesforce interface or without going to the docusign application then you can send it using docusign envelope action okay and next we have email action so as name suggest this is used to send email from integration procedures without any code okay and next we have integration procedure action so if you want to call integration procedure into another integration procedure then we can use this step okay and next we have intelligence action so i never used it and i don't have much idea about it but in velocity we have intelligence machine so this action help us to run that machine and provide inputs okay and next we have list action so i think this is the mostly used or important step while you will work on real time requirement so what we can do using this step we can perform multiple operations on list or array like let's say you want to merge multiple arrays or lists or you want to do sorting or simply you want to modify the list then you can use this step to perform these operations okay and next we have decision matrix action so as name suggest if you want to call decision matrix then we can use it and decision matrix is a tool in velocity that help us to effectively filter data using multiple input dimensions okay and now next we have remote action so this help us to call apex class method into integration procedures and which method we can call using this step that we will discuss sometime later and now next we have response action so by default integration procedure doesn't return anything so if you want to return selected or particular data then you can use this step and specify what you want to return from integration procedure okay and next we have http action step so this step help us to make call outs so if you want to make any kind of call out then we can use this step and at last we have set values action so this is also mostly used step in ip or omni scripts and it help us to declare custom variables which we can use further okay so now i think we have revised all the actions which are available in ip okay now let's discuss about what all group components are available in ip so group components means we can run multiple related steps as a single unit for example you want to run five conditions when a particular condition meet then instead of putting condition on all those five actions or steps what we can do we can use a conditional block group component and add condition on that conditional group okay so we have four types of group components as of now and first is cache block So let's say you are getting data from Salesforce database and you may need to get same data multiple times further then what you can do you can put all those steps into cache block so it will save the output of step within session or or cache so when we will query same data next time then we will get data from cache only without going to Salesforce database okay and next we have conditional block so as we have discussed if you want to run multiple steps if a specified condition is true 
then we can put all those steps in that conditional block and instead of putting condition on particular steps we can add condition on conditional block itself okay and this also help us to achieve if else concept like under that conditional block if we want to implement if else condition then we can do that also easily okay now next we have loop block so if you want to run same step multiple times or for each item of array then we can use this step and next we have try case block so this step help us to return specified output or colon apex class if a step within it fails I mean we can add multiple steps in this try catch block and if error occurs in those steps then we can return custom response or also we can call apex class okay now next we have how to conditionally run steps in IP so one approach we already have discussed like putting the step into conditional block but additionally with every step we have an option called execution conditional formula in which we can define our execution condition so if that condition is true then only that step will execute else it will be skipped okay now next we have can we call integration procedure into another integration procedure then answer will be yes we already have seen that using integration procedure action we can call another integration procedure into integration procedure okay now next we have how to deal with governor limits in integration procedure okay so if we talk about governor limits in integration procedures then same per transaction governor limits apply to integration procedures as well like 100 soql and 100 dml if we call it normally i mean with synchronous approach and we have options to call integration procedure with asynchronous approach as well and that we will cover with omni script but now let's say we are calling one integration procedure into another and both has lots of data raptors or soql queries so you are getting one one SQL error and you are calling main integration procedure with synchronous approach then what we can do so in this case we can run our child integration procedure in different thread by checking chain on step option so what this option will do it will run that step into another transaction so current transaction governor limits will not exceed and we have this chain on step option with most of the steps so we can use it if required so this is also an additional option to deal with governor limits okay now next we have how to resolve this error you have uncommitted work pending please commit or rollback before calling out in IP so this issue generally occur when we first perform DML and then try to make call out in same transaction because Salesforce doesn't allow to make call out if we have any uncommitted DML operation and let's say in our integration procedure in first step we are doing DML operation and in second step we have to make call out using HTTP action then how we can manage this situation all right so if we will perform both operations in same transaction then definitely we will get this error but if we mark one of these step with chain on step option then that step will execute in different transaction and our error will get resolved okay now next we have which apex method can be called using remote action so as discussed remote actions are used to call apex class methods in omni studio tools like integration procedures flex cards and omni scripts but the question is which all apex class methods we can call or what should be the qualification criteria for that okay so we can only call methods from classes which implements velocity open interface or velocity open interface 2 so let's discuss with this example so here i have created a class velocity data helper which implements velocity open interface 2 and which is part of velocity cmt package and in this interface we have invoke method so we have to implement that method here and it returns boolean and take four input parameters so first is method name and second is map of input parameters and third is map of output parameters and fourth we have options so whenever you will try to call any method from remote actions then this invoke method will execute and we will get actual method name in this parameter so here we need to check for which method this request is coming here and accordingly we need to call actual method 
so you can see here on line number seven where I'm checking method name and calling get context method and here on line number 19 I'm extracting account ID from input map and on line number 21 I'm putting contacts into output map so this context list will be available in Omni Studio tools okay so in nutshell we can call method of any class which implements velocity open interface or velocity open interface 2 and it will call only invoke method so here we need to add condition and call our actual method and finally we need to return response in output map okay next we have can we call integration procedure from apex class rest api and flows then short answer is yes we can call ip from all these tools and if we talk about apex class then in velocity package we have a class integration procedure service and in this class we have a method run integration service so using this method we can call our integration procedure in apex class and from here we need to pass our integration procedure name and input parameters and input options okay about rest apis then this will be the endpoint like here we need to provide the namespace name it could be velocity cmt or omni studio you can check that into installed packages then we have v1 and integration procedure and at last we need to provide our integration procedure type and subtype with underscore okay and now if we talk about flows then directly we can't use but to call an integration procedure from salesforce flow we have to create a flow component okay so after creating that flow component we can use that flow component in our actual flow okay now next we have what will happen if user has permission on parent ip but not on child ip so you know we can control access of data raptor or integration procedure using sharing settings and profile and permission sets by implementing velocity required permission check class and now the question is what will happen if user has permission on parent integration procedure but does not have on child integration procedure then we can say yes parent can invoke child even if user doesn't have direct access okay so if you have permission on parent then child integration procedure will also get called okay so that's it for this video in which we have seen questions related to integration procedures and some scenario based questions we will discuss in separate video and in next part we will discuss questions related to flex cards and if you like this video then please hit on like and subscribe button and thank you for watching this i will see you in next video